Good morning. I bring you greetings from the Dallas Independent School District. I am Alice Black, the Executive Principal of Yvonne A. Dual Town Youth Center, a world class high school. Our superintendent, Dr. Michael Hinojosa, could not be with us today. However, his thoughts and prayers are with us throughout this conference. Dr. Hinojosa and the district are strong advocates for graduating all students with the knowledge and skills ready for college and all the workplace. We are committed to closing the gap of the academic achievement for all minority students as we prepare to become the recipients of the renowned Growth Award for 2010. In fact, it is quite fitting that our Congresswoman, Eddie Bernice Johnson, chose the Yvonne A. Ewell Town Reef Center for this educational form. But within the walls of this school, according to Newsweek magazine, house the top two schools in the nation. Talented and gifted has been number one for two years in a row. The School for Science Engineering moved from number eight to number two. As you can see, we share your commitment in providing a quality education for all students, regardless of race and income. We understand the challenges and stand ready to assist you in this endeavor. Surely today's dialogue will be beneficial to all who attend. Once again, welcome. I would like to introduce you to some very special guests from Dallas Independent School District, Dr. Donna Michaud. Would you please stand? She's the Chief Administrative Officer for the DISD. Dr. Robin Vine <laughs> is the Executive Director for the Secondary West Learning Community. Give me a smile. Dr. But most of all, I would like to present to you the Honorable Eddie Bernice Johnson. Representative Eddie Bernice Johnson is the first lady and the first African American to represent the 30th Congressional District of Texas. Now in her eighth term, she sits on the House of Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and the Committee on Science. She serves as senior whip, that fits the white whip, isn't it? And chairwoman on the subcommittee on water resources and environment. Congresswoman Johnson is chairwoman of the Texas Democratic Delegation and is also a former chair of Congresswoman of the Congressional Black Caucus. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Congresswoman A. Bernice Johnson. Let's go. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Ms. Black always welcomes me with such great enthusiasm. It makes me feel good to meet you. Thanks to all of you for being here, and most especially to, I think, us panelists that come to spend time with us. And I hope as the morning moves on, we'll even have more people to join us. Uh, this is such an outstanding uh, school that I love coming. I love to see uh, the students ask the questions to the speakers that we have coming, the Eddie Bridges Johnson lecture series that was started by the University of Texas at Dallas uh, is held here. And I've tried to get very talented and stimulating speakers to come, but they always understand when they have completed their presentations and answering questions that they're speaking to very special students. And so I thank uh, most of you for being, all of you for being here. I want to uh, introduce my colleagues very quickly, and they will be on stage uh, early afternoon. Uh, first, we have the chair of the conference, uh, Congresswoman Carolyn Fitzpatrick from Detroit, Michigan. She's on the Appropriations Committee, and that's a really important committee. Uh, our majority whip. Jim Clyburn from South Carolina. And he also oversees that appropriations process. Uh, 
Mr. Betty Thompson, who is the chair of the Floor Committee on uh, Homeland Security. And, uh, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Rush from Chicago, who serves on the Mr. <laughs> Diane Watson from Hollywood, California. <laughs> Affairs. Mr. Al Green from Houston serves on Homeland Security and Financial Institutions. <laughs> Barbara Lee from California, Oakland, California, uh, serves on Appropriations and <coughs> Sheila Jackson Lee from Houston serves on Judiciary, Homeland Security, and Civil Foreign Affairs. <laughs> and my colleague and good friend from Florida, uh, who uh, serves on a committee with me, Ms. Corey Brown. Uh, we went together, as quite a few of these people up here now, for classmates. She serves on transportation and chairs the subcommittee on railroads and veterans. So if you have anything to say about railroads or veterans, you will get a response. <laughs> I will allow the moderators to introduce our presenters. Uh, we are here because we are attempting to put ourselves before the public around the country. This is the southern uh, regional uh, outreach meeting, and we are delighted to uh, deal with the subject that I chose, and because I thought it was so fitting coming uh, to Dallas to talk once again, as they hear me all the time talking about uh, technology, innovation, uh, our digital age that we're about to move on to the innovation age. Because to me, it is so important, and I can tell you that as a, a youngster, young woman here, uh, Texas Instruments taught me to look in that direction. When you live in a city where a large corporation uh, comes about and the people who put it together, they're right in the community with you and they're reaching out to do things, uh, financing uh, educational institutions all around, and coming up with uh, these calculators first, but then Dr. Kilby discovered that chip, and everywhere you go in the world now, you see Texas Instruments. And Texas Instruments has not been a company unto itself. It has reached out to try to make sure that they have a viable future by making sure that our young people are ready to take on the challenges as we move forward uh, in this challenging world. We know that uh, much of what we see in technology is almost invisible. We know that, I'm uh, looking at uh, this, I guess it has to do with the computer system here, but you, you see something like this. See, when I was born, we didn't have anything like this. Uh, you can punch here, it's a chip in there, and go where you want it to go. And so I don't need to continue to uh, support uh, uh, my comments on what I feel about the technology world. But I do. Uh, have real concern about whether or not we are producing enough students uh, in the sciences and uh, the technology, the engineering, and math. Uh, that's really where we have great interest for the future. And one of the reasons why we have that interest is because if we don't produce large numbers, first, we won't get lots of answers for things we're looking for. But secondly, our country will lose its edge in the competition. We must remain on the cutting edge, we must remain competitive, and we want our businesses to stay in this country and not go someplace else with talent. And we want talent to come here so that they can learn from our democracy and go back. But we don't want talent to come here and replace what we have. So we must be ready. And we have attempted to get people that know exactly where we need to be, people that I've observed.